Hey guys, this is Alex from Team APS and I've got a deck profile for you. So, what you see here is my new and improved Deep Sea deck. Except it runs Earth's Arctic cards. So this is not a Deep Sea deck, but an Earth's Arctic deck. And the whole point of the deck is making this boy right here. Earth's Arctic Septentrion. But he, as strong of a monster as Septentrion is, this deck needs a lot of help to actually get anything going. Because Arthrotic plays are inherently expensive and Septentrion not incredibly great on his own. So that's why my good old girl Deep Sea Diva is here. I run Deep Sea Diva at 3 because she is your starter card. She is the most optimal starter card. If you see Deep Sea Diva, you are in a good place. Because when you see Deep Sea Diva, you can special summon any level 3 Sea Serpent monster from your deck. The one you'll get most often will be Neptibus the Atlantean Prince. I run Neptibus at 2 because 3 is a bit too much and Neptibus in hand is not worth as much in the deck. Even if you open Neptibus and you're forced to normal summon him, you can get your play started, but they will not be as good if you start it with a Deep Sea Diva. To supplement this, instead of a third Neptibus, I play 1 for 1. And if you do get Neptibus out with 1 for 1, however, that's a totally different beast. You can use your... Um, Nethibus effects to eventually get into Deep Sea Diva and get her out anyway. And when you get both these guys out together is when you get to really start having fun and make um, Christian Halka Fibrax. So Mandatory Dragoons, I run three because I don't want to accidentally open one and not have enough Dragoons for my plays. Nethibus does require two um, Atlantean monsters in the deck and I only run these three Atlanteans. Next up is Deep Sea Minstrel, a pretty important combo card, but also pretty useful for looking at your opponent's hand and getting, giving you a feel for what they've got. Once you know what's in their hand, you can actually make some branching plays that are pretty flexible. Like You might enjoy um, having that extra knowledge Minstrel gives you, but also if you end up seeing something really dangerous in their hand, you can decide whether or not to ever g even give that card back to them at the end of their turn, at the end of your turn. You do have a choice. Despot 001 is the most Im important um, combo piece in the deck. Um, thank God um, it's still active even if you draw into it, but I run it only at one anyway because I really don't ha I don't want to have to run through this combo more than once per round. That would be ridiculous and that they run out of materials anyway. But Despot 001 is really important because when you're using Despot 001 combos, you're typically using Mega Phantom Beast Orodon and Halka Fibrax, which means you're looping through tokens in Despot 001 from the graveyard for multiple synchro summons. So he's actually the most important tuner in the deck, oddly enough. I think he's the one I synchro summon with the most. Next up is Mega Phantom Beast Coltwing, also a mandatory combo piece in this deck. Typically near the um, end of your combo string, after you've used Despot 001 once and Synchro Summoned with it, you're going to make Omega Bit Phantom Beast Cult Wing to get the tokens that it summons again. And when it makes new tokens, my Despot 001 comes back again. So need to have them in a deck. I run them at one as well. You really, really, really don't want to open them though, because you lose Cult Wing, you lose a lot. <laughs> if, that op if that's in your hand already, you're not making those plays. You've got to make some other plays and they're not as good. Next up, I have my Deep Sea Artisan. I run him at one. Pretty mandatory combo piece. He's really useful because he has a mill effect on summon that also will special summon a level four water monster from your grave. And the one you're gonna wanna get is Deep Sea Menstrual so it can also get its mills. It's also a tuner, so that's pretty helpful. You're gonna want to um, be mixing around your tuners when you play this deck so that you can both special summon your um, Earth's Arctic Polari, but also your other synchro monsters. Here's Lapis Dragon, not mandatory, but it's an optional combo piece and a pretty good one at that. The moment it searches the hand, it's about to summon itself to the field. So it's really low effort on your part. Use this with your um, tokens that Aurodon makes or Coltwing makes so that you can go for very easy level eight plays like um, Borlo Savage Dragon. If you do it right, you'll have um, Christian Hawk of Firebrax in your graveyard already. So your Borlo Savage Dragon is gonna have two Borlo counters on him with 3750 attack points, so pretty great. Next up, another optional card in the combos is Moulin Glacia. Moulin Glacia is pretty great. Typically, you're not going to use Lapis Dragon and Moulin Glacia in the same combos together, but if you open Moulin Glacia, that changes. Moulin Glacia is pretty great because she's going to empty two cards out of your opponent's hand. If you combine that with Minstrel's effects, then that you can make them lose three cards out of their hand. So you have some pretty good control over what your opponent's playing when you're playing Moulin Glacia. Oddly enough, I didn't really see too much use in Moulin Glacia today. I guess I was a bit unlucky. But Moulin Glacia is still a really great card, and I'd suggest running it if you just want that extra scummy control of your opponent. So that's 
mainly it for the combo of the deck. Those are all the cards you basically need to make your combos happen. But I have to warn you, when I talked about mills earlier, this is where your Sarfix come in. Because our Sarfix are so expensive, you want to make your Polari and your other your Sarfix plays as cheap as possible. The way to do that is when you're milling with your... Um, Deep Sea Monsters, you want your Arsartic Monsters, these guys here, to be going to the grave. You want them in the grave so that your Arsartic Polari can have targets for its special summon effects. But you also kind of want to get these guys in the hand because in your less optimal hands, you'll be happy to see a couple Arsartics in there because they can at least help you jumpstart your plays. They can help you um, fill your graveyard a little bit better if you have um, two in your hand. If you have three in your hand, you can even force your um, Polari to... Um, you can force a Polari summon even if you didn't get the full Deep Sea Diva combo. Um, I run all three of the large Arsartic monsters, the level 8s, because they're, um, they're tuner monsters. They're level 8, and that's really useful in the deck. And they have good effects. Megatanus can Book of Moon something. Megabilis can banish a card. Megapolar can... Um, pop spell or trap cards. You can only do this when you have Arsartic monsters on the board, so you really don't want to be using these arbitrarily. So like I said, you want to only use these when the chips are down or you finished your combo already. You can hold these in your hand because they're quick effects you can use them during your opponent's turn so that when you've already got your Septentrion out on the field, these guys are really, really live in your hand. They're really useful for that matter. Um, the reason that I run the 8s at max and not the 7s is because the 8s are the ones that Polari needs to, um, I guess, tune with so that you can make your level 7 um, or Star Trek Synchro Monsters. The level 7s quite, aren't quite as useful, but they have um, their own uses, especially when the chips are down, like I was saying before. McBillis is a useful one. He can, when he's special summoned, it will special summon another Arsartic monster from your hand, so you can very quickly set up your board for a Polari play if things get that bad. Hopefully you don't have to do that, but it's good to run them at three just in case. I run McPolar for a kind of a similar reason. It's the searcher. When it hits the field, you can search any um, Ursartic monster from a deck. So go ahead and do that when you get a chance. Um, Ursartic McTanus is not my favorite. It's the grave recovery one. So when it hits the field, you get an Ursartic monster out the grave. I don't, I, I don't, Really like the effect that much. So I only run them at one just because he has a name and you just want to see our Sarctic cards at some level. So I don't want to run none, but I'm going to run one. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> um, next up, I'm done with my monsters, actually. So that's the monster lineup. As you saw, um, that top half of the, of the deck profile was all combo pieces. This is how I'm running this deck. And the bottom half were Sarctic monsters, which are not combo pieces. They're just kind of useful, and you want to see them to make things going. Let's get things going. Because unfortunately, if you mill with your deep seas and don't see any Arsardics in that mill, you are messed up. And if you've no in the hand, none in hand, then it was all for nothing. You really need to make sure Arsardics are showing up for your um, combos to happen at all. So I'm running one for one as well to help combos get started better. When you um, hit one for one um, on your first turn, you can get Neptibus out without having using Diva for that. But you can, it's still best to just Make sure you get Dio and Nectibus out together so you can make them into Halka Fibrax. The combos work easier that way. Just take my word for it. Next up is, is a Sartic Departure. Not really necessary for any combos in particular, but it can get you two Arsartics to hand, and the discard is pretty useful. This is a pretty solid card and good Ash Bait. If you're ever worried about your opponent going after a Deep to Diva with Ash Blossom, see if they'll bite on the Sartic Departure instead. It's kind of worth it since it's going to get you two cards to hand, and they're going to hate that. Also, if they ash it, that means you lost two cards, so pretty worth it for them, too. So the, um, the discard, I said, was really good, and the reason for that is because I also run Deep Sea Aria. Deep Sea Aria is a kind of starter card, but it takes some setting up because you have to banish a water monster out the grave. So if you want to get somebody to the grave, you start a Celtic Departure. Pretty good, right? Um... Unfortunately, though, you don't want to um, use an Arsartic play to get something in the grave because then you're locked out of um, special summoning from the extra deck um, of Link Monsters and Aziz Monsters. That kind of screws you up. You kind of want to get into your Link Monsters first. So with that in mind, I only run Deep Sea Aria at two. You could run it at more or less. You're not wrong either way. Over here... I'm running my Arsartic Big Dipper, the field spell, at two. The reason for that is because Arsartic Polari can special can um, grab it right from the deck and activate it. That's pretty useful in this deck, and you'll find that Big Dipper is a pretty decent threat when you've got your board set up. Your opponents are going to want to try to out it or get around it. 
And that's pretty helpful. It also helps make your special summons of your Ashartic monsters a little bit more free because it can allow you to banish an Ashartic from the grave instead of tributing one for all of your tribute effects for Ashartic monsters. It's a pretty handy card. I run it at two because I run two Polari and Polari gets out the deck. It's pretty useful to have more than one just in case you open one and get like gotten rid of really, really fast or something. I run one Arthritic Slider. This could honestly be anything. It doesn't really matter too much to me, though the few times it shows up for me, I actually like seeing it because it can spell summon an Arthritic either banished or out the grave, which means typically if you're seeing Slider, it's live somehow. And getting an Arthritic monster on the board without tripping is always a good thing. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, um, Departure has a similar effect when you would tribute for an Arsartic monster's effect. You can actually banish this from the graveyard instead, so it's another decent male target with your deep sea monsters. There's a lot of good stuff here, some weird synergy that you wouldn't expect. I, I just like this deck a lot. Alright, that's it for the main deck. You kind of got a flavor for what I'm doing here, hopefully, but I guess you really won't know until you see the extra deck because that's the whole point of the deck. So like I was saying before, my whole um, strategy here is doing lots and lots of synchro summons that lead to a board that puts out um, Arsothic Septentrion with some other stuff next to it. You typically want to try to make him as often as possible, but never alone. Sometimes you will end up with him alone, but hopefully not too often. So um, he's the main reason you play the deck. He is a Nye Floodgate that denies your opponent the effects of Xyz monsters or Link monsters. He can also search Arsarthic cards from the deck whenever your opponent special summons. That works really well with your Big Dipper that's also gaining counters every time someone special summons. And when your Big Dipper hits 7, then you can start stealing monsters from your opponent's side of the board. So you're getting a lot from your opponent's special summons when you have both Septentrion and Big Dipper out. They're afraid of Big Dipper and they're afraid of Septentrion. They gotta do something about both and typically it's gonna require special summoning and you love that. Um, here's Christian Pack of Firebrax, mandatory card in the deck. I run it at one only because I only I only hope this ever use it once per round. Really good card. It helps you get Deathspot 001 out the deck. You immediately link summon this guy and Deathspot 001 off when it hits the field. Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Dawn is what you turn them into. When it hits the field, you make three Mecha Phantom Beast tokens, and that um, Deathspot 001 comes right back the moment you do that because it special summons whenever you special summon um, two or more machine monsters at the same time. Pretty good combination right there. So, sadly, Aurora Dawn tends to sit on my field after. It's got 2,100 attacks. So that's really not bad. I've actually used that to push sometimes because it's not going anywhere if my field's set up well. So it's not bad once you have it out and the combo's done. Here's my Deep Sea Prima Donna. She's a mandatory combo piece. She gets your um, Deep Sea Artisan out the deck so that your male combos can start. Pretty important card. She also will return a banish card from your, that you banish to your opponent to do that. Typically, that's going to be something you took out their hand with Minstrel. If you don't want to give them back the card you made with Minstrel, you're going to have to do a slightly longer play that incorporates um, Cyframe Lord Omega. And that way you'll banish a second card out their hand. And instead of giving them back the problem card, you'll give them back that random card you took out with Omega instead. But yeah, you do want to get off our special summon. So make sure you plan for that if you see your opponent has like a Dark Ruler no more, you're about to get back to them, and you just don't want them having that in the end. Here's the Celtic Polar Eye. I run it at two because um, it's a combo piece, and it goes back. It goes to the grave very quickly after you um, first make it, and you don't really want to waste time having to get it back out the grave, so I think two is a good number to run it at, maybe even three if you're really into Polar Eye. I love it a lot myself, so I wouldn't blame you if you do. Polarize is pretty good because once it hits the field, it extends by special summoning an Arsartic monster from the grave. When you and because it made it made the field spell come out, you can immediately use the field spell to pay its tribute cost for that special summon. Because you just special summoning an Arsartic monster, it's probably a level eight, and that level eight and, and polarize can special summon together a uh, Arsartic level seven monster, either Septentrion or Grand Chariot. If it's turn one, definitely um, Septentrion. If it's turn two or more, maybe um, Grand Chariot. Grand Chariot is pretty great. Um, here's um, Boreal Savage Dragon, probably my secondary boss to the deck. Most combos will lead to this, um, a Boreal Savage with two um, counters on it next to your Septentrion at the very least. So you better hope you're always seeing that combination of cards. Boreal a really good card in general. It gets over a lot of 3Ks, and you can tell that our star decks really don't get over 3K normally, so you kind of want to be able to get in the Boreal as much as possible. 
Herald of Arclight is kind of funny. I actually only use this as a combo piece. It's meant to be synchro summoned off of Despot 001 and one token just to fill, um, empty out my board a little bit and then be immediately tributed off by Auroradon. I typically do not use it for its um, negation effect, though you can, and I've done that. So it's still worth having for that reason. Pretty good card. It's very important to run something like this to um, empty out your board for this phase plays to work at all. So don't think you don't need to run Herald. Actually run Herald, and you will have to use it. Next up, so um, the rest of my extra deck lineup are just kind of useful monsters that may or may not show up in any one duel. First up is Arctic Grand Chariot. If my, my board got blown and my opponent trying to make a comeback on my next turn, I'm going to try to make him. Because on summon, Grand Chariot can pop two cards on the field. Sure, it's targeting. Sure, that's not, not like un a broken effect or anything. But it's two cards. And that can be all it takes to put your opponent back where they belong on the ground. Also, he can protect our target cards by negating. And that's pretty cute. Cute. Um, you can tribute monsters from your hand or field to um, do that. So he also has a bit of synergy with any extra um, Atlanteans that are in your hand or something like that. Typically, you're not always going to have that kind of thing ready. You're just going to tribute some random card. But the fact that you're protecting your assaulted cards with him is pretty good. Just don't summon him for, on turn one because he's really not doing anything for you at that point, And you've wasted his um, on summon effect. I run him at one because I hope to only have to use him once per duel. You never know. But I really hope so. Next up is my Ravage Rock Dragon Archythus, my level 9, because yeah, sometimes things get weird and you can just make a level 9. Crocodragon's Dragon's a pretty good monster. You can pop cards right off the field by discarding two cards from your hand, combine it with Atlantean effects, and you get some good stuff for it. It's a good idea to have this because sometimes just, you're not going to be making 8s and 7s all day. Um, the 9s come up. <laughs> I can't really tell you anything else about it. Also, oh yeah, and the draw on summon can maybe fix a hand. Maybe. Like, if your hand's bad and you make and you made this because you have nothing better to do, the draw might not really save you, but you might as well try, right? Here is an assortment of level 8 synchros. I'm running Scarlight, Crystal Wing, Cyframe Lord, and a Dragite. These all have different reasons for being run. I won't go into them. They're just... Basically a toolbox of eights because I make eights as consistently as anything else. Finally, my level seven is F.A. Dawn Dragster. For a similar reason to Crocodragon, sometimes you're just going to make a seven that isn't Deep Sea Prima Donna. Sometimes you're just going to be left with that kind of a number out. And this is a very strong level seven synchro at that. It, it's a negator. It can make kids spells and trap cards. Also has two, 2k attack, so pretty useful. Also, some of your combos will actually lead straight to Dawn Dragster, so you might as well have it for when those um, times come up because you won't have be running any other level 7 synchros that I know of. All right, so that was my deck. This is my Arsartic deck profile that I went second with at Locals today. It was really fun. I love this deck. Yeah, it's a combo deck. Yeah, it uses the Halka Firebrax combo. And I know some people aren't real fans of that. But I think this is an excellent deck. And it shows off what our Sarctic can do when properly supported. I'm hoping that in the future they don't require so many of these cards to work. And it can work on their own. But until that day comes up, this is the way to do it, guys. So that's all I've got for you. Thanks. See ya.